الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله We continue going over the tremendous book Al-Qawad Al-Arba' by the Imam the Mujaddid Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab Rahimahullah Ta'ala We are still on the introduction and the dua that is contained therein and we have reached the portion where the imam rahimahullah ta'ala he says wa idubatuliya sabr and when they are tested they are patient and when they are tested they are patient patience is something that is tremendous and it is a very important topic and affair we took last week the hadith that imam ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala he utilized to point out that iman is of two halves nisfuhu shukr wa nisfuhu sabr Half of it is thankfulness and gratitude and half of it is patience. We spoke in last week's class about shukr. With Milahi Ta'ala in this week's class we want to speak about sabr. The Imam he makes this tremendous dua and that when they are tested they are patient. And that when they are tested, they are patient. Or they make sure from those who when they are tested, then they are patient. It is incumbent for us to know what is patience. And what does patience entail? Because in order for us to actualize patience and to truly be of those who are patient, then we have to know what is patience. And what does it mean to be patient? What is sabr? And what does it mean to have sabr? Imam Ibn Qayyim Rahimahullah Ta'ala He mentions A mihanun Min Allah Ta'ala Yubatarihi biha He says that calamities They are from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala And he tests His servants by way of them And that Allah Ta'ala he, he tests By way of them Allah Ta'ala inside of his noble book He says وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَالنَّقُصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah Ta'ala he says in verily most definitely no doubt we will test you with something from hunger or we will test you with something from fear and from hunger and from the loss of monies and from the loss of life and of fruits so give glad tidings to the patient so give glad tidings to the patient so Allah Jalla wa Ala He tells us here that He will test us that He will test the believers He will test the human beings Naam. and with that as Imam Ibn Qayyim He said that the calamities then they are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to test the people by way of them. In order to give tests by way of them. فَفَرَضَهُ فِيهَا الصَّبْرِ وَتَسَلِّي He said, but Allah ta'ala, He has made it obligatory, He has made it mandated, He has mandated it, that when an individual is touched with these tests, 
that he is patient and that he has solace. Allah Ta'ala, he has mandated for the believer that goes through the test that he is patient and he has solace. Well, sabr, and what does it mean to be patient? And with Allah Ta'ala, I would like for the sisters to write this down inside of their notes, inshallah, and for the fast typers from amongst you to type it inside of the uh, type box there. Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimullahu ta'ala, he says that وَالصَّبَرْ حَبْسُ النَّفْسِ عَنِ التَّسَخُطْ بِالْمَقْدُورِ He says, it is to control oneself from being angry from that which has been decreed. This is number one. That what it means to have patience is that an individual... He controls oneself from becoming angry with that which has been prescribed or that which has been decreed. This is the first. Well, secondly, حَبْسٌ lisan عَنْ shakwa. Secondly, that a person withholds his tongue from complaints. He withholds his tongue from complaints. And thirdly, وَحَبْسُ الْجَوَارِحِ عَنِ الْمَعْصِيَةِ That he controls his limbs and he prevents his limbs from sin and transgression. He prevents his limbs from sin and transgression. These three aspects of sabr, then they are necessary and they have to be there. So if we're going to reflect and think about our own situations and that in which we go through, and if we want to reflect and to see whether or not we are actualizing sabr and what it means to have sabr, then let us look to these three affairs. Have we, one, controlled ourselves? And prevented ourselves from becoming angry with that which has been de- uh, prescribed or decreed. Have we prevented ourselves from becoming angry from the decree? That's one. Two. Have we prevented our tongues from complaining? Have we prevented our tongues from complaining? Now, because how many times you have people that they would launch much complaints. But at the same time they'll say, but I'm being patient. But I'm being patient. Likewise, we have to control ourselves and prevent ourselves, prevent our limbs from disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many times have individuals, they go through a calamity and they embark upon sin, claiming that they try to be patient. Why are they committing the sin? Just think to those who turn to intoxicants and things of his nature, because they are not patient. So they'll turn to intoxicants. They'll leave off doing what they should be doing from the prayer and so on and so forth. And then they will have the audacity to claim, but I'm trying to be patient. I'm trying to hang in there. I'm trying to hold on. I'm trying to be patient. We, you do not display patience by leaving off that which is obligatory, nor by going to that which is haram. And this is what is intended here by the statement of the Imam, Rahimullah Ta'ala, wa habzun jawarih an al and that an individual he controls his or he yani he controls his limbs and he prevents his limbs from disobeying Allah. Whether that would be leaving off that which is obligatory, or whether that would be taking and embarking upon that which is haram. As it comes in the tremendous hadith an Abi Darda. قال أوصاني خليني he said أبو الدرداء رضي الله تعالى عنه he said that my my beloved friend he gave me advice that my beloved friend he gave me advice meaning who meaning the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he told him لا تشرك بالله شيئا do not associate anything with partners with Allah and then you will begin to see here and you will understand maybe a little better how we need patience in every aspect of our life. 
There's every aspect of our life we need patience. Naam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Do not associate partners with Allah whatsoever. وَإِنْ قُطِعْتَ وَخُرِّقْتَ Even if you were to be dismembered and burnt. Don't associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you were to be under the threat of torture and to be burnt and dismembered and so on and so forth, do not associate partners with Allah jalla wa'ala. Even if you were to be dismembered, cut up, and you were to be burnt, do not associate partners with Allah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, وَلَا تَتْرُكْ صَلَاةَ مَكْتُوبَةً And do not leave off the obligatory prayers. And then the Prophet Sallallahu said, مُتَعَمِّدًا Intentionally. Never intentionally leave off the obligatory prayers. No matter what's happening. No matter what you're going through. No matter what calamity has touched you. Do not intentionally leave off the obligatory prayers. And there, this will necessitate what? Patience. That we have to be patient. And inshallah ta'ala, we will mention shortly the levels or the categories of patience. For lack of a better term. Naam. Alakullin. This particular hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam goes on and he says, فَمَنْ تَرَكَهَا فَقَدْ بَرِئَتْ مِنْهُ الذِّمَّةِ Because whoever leaves off the obligatory prayers intentionally, then he has uh, freed himself from the dhimma. He has freed himself from uh, the protection. Uh, whoever leaves off the obligatory prayers, then verily he would have Freed himself from the protection. طيب. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he goes on and he says, "Wala tashrab al khamar," and do not drink intoxicants. No matter how bad the situation may become, no matter how rough and tough it will become. Do not drink intoxicants. فَإِنَّهَا مِفْتَاحُ كُلِّ شَرْ Because it takes in a, the, the, the uh, intoxicants, they are the origin or they are the key to all evil. They are the key to all evil. When, when one reflects upon this particular hadith, he sees that in order to implement this hadith, an individual, he would need patience. When that calamity comes, he will have to mention, or he will have to yani, actualize these uh, three things that Imam Ibn Qayyim, he mentioned. Naam. The Imam, again, he mentions that we have to control ourselves from becoming angry. With that which has been decreed. Control our tongues from complaining. Control our limbs from sin and transgression. This is important that we reflect upon this. Because as we see or we may know of individuals who they exhibit a lack of patience when the calamity comes. Because they violate each and every one of these things. They become mad and upset by their situation. They articulate that upon their tongue with their complaints. And they may go and take to the haram. Claiming that this is what they need to make it through. So they'll take to the drugs. or take to the, the alcohol. They'll take to the whatever. And they claim this is that which they need. But in fact they will find that these things only increase their punishments. Only increase their tragedy. Their calamity is only increased and multiplied. When an individual seeks Intoxicants and haram things to make it through. Alakulin, the Imam, he goes on and he says, bringing some examples of what it means to violate with the limbs and to show impatience with the limbs. He says that they have to control their limbs from sin. He says, kalatum, like slapping. An individual becomes impatient uh, after calamity has struck, and you may find that they may start to beat on themselves and slap themselves, become hysterical. The Shaykh he says, and they may start to tear their clothes. 
So a calamity strikes and bad news comes and they yell out and they cry out and they start to rip and tear at their clothes. And they tear their hair. They start to pull out and tear at their hair because of the calamities. All of this has to be avoided because all of these things are signs of an individual being impatient. The Shaykh he says, وَمَدَّارُ الصَّبْرُ عَلَى هَذِهِ الْأَرْكَانِ الثَّلَاثَةِ He said in the central point of sabr, then it will be upon these three things. The central point of sabr will be upon these three things. These three things that were mentioned. And as a test, I want you to write down or yani, to say to yourselves, what are those three things that were mentioned? What are the three things that the Imam Ibn Qayyim Ta'ala is talking about that the sabr revolves around. The Shaykh he says, فَإِذَا قَامَ بِهِ الْعَبْدِ And I want you to listen very closely to what uh, the Imam Rahimullah Ta'ala is saying. Because yani, this, shows you the, the, this shows you the patience. Mm-hmm. Huh? As the, uh, the poet, he said, the poet he said, الصَّبْرُ الصَّبْرُ كَإِسْمِهِ مُرٌ مَذَاقَتِهِ وَلَكِنْ عَقِبَتُهُ أَهْلَى مِنَ الْعَسْلِ the poet, he said that sabr is like his name, bitter to the taste. That sabr is like his name, bitter to the taste. Damn. An example of this, what it, what it means, yani, like his name, sometimes when an individual is agitated, right, because of a calamity or difficulty that they are going through, and uh, sometimes if a person were to say to them, Achi, oh, ya ukhti, be patient, right? Sometimes people, just by hearing the word patient, by hearing the word sabr, they get agitated more. Sometimes. And these people are, of course, not dealing with the calamity correctly. They're not establishing the sabr right. Uh, so when, he, when they hear the word, they get this, like, it makes them even more angry. What you mean be patient? You're not going through what I'm going through. You don't understand, so on and so forth, right? And they get mad. So this is what the poet is alluding to. That sabr is like his name is bitter to the taste. It's bitter to the taste. Sometimes people, right, they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. Huh? Well, I mean, we, we understand everything in, in our life what it is going to require from us sabr, patience. Naam. The Shaykh, he says, or the poet rather, he goes on and he says, but you will find that the end result of sabr is sweeter than honey. The end result of sabr is sweeter than honey. Right? And we're going to get some understanding, right? So further detail on this particular point as Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimullah ta'ali points out the reality that فَإِذَا قَامَ بِهِ الْعَبْدِ That if a abd, if he establishes these three things, if a abd, if he establishes these three things, كَمَا uh, يَنْبَغِي If he established them correctly, the way that they are to be established, the Imam Rahimullah Ta'ala he says, in Qalabat al Mihna fi Haqihi Minha. He said that then the disaster and the misfortune as relates to that particular person. The disaster and, and misfortune for the person who exhibits and he displays patience will be turned around and changed from a misfortune to a fortunate opportunity. You understand? For the abd, when he's patient upon a calamity, and he brings forth the patience that is required, he brings forth the patience that is binding upon him, that is necessary, then his his misfortune will change into a fortune. The disaster and misfortune for him, it will change into a fortunate opportunity for him. وَاسْتَحَلَّتْ الْبَلِيَّ أَعْطِيَّةً and you will find that the crisis and calamity will be transformed into a bounty and gratuity. وَصَارَ الْمَكْرُوهُ مَحْبُوبًا And that which was hated and detested will turn into that which is beloved and cherished. But this is only for the one who exhibits and he displays patience. 
that patience that that is required for him to do. Whereas an individual who takes to committing the haram, who takes to leaving off the prayer and leaving off the righteousness and so on and so forth, then you will find that these actions of his will just add calamity to calamity. It will add disaster upon tragedy. That's all it would do. Him complaining and, and running off at his mouth and so on and so forth, it would just add calamity to calamity, pain to strife. That's all it would do. So it is incumbent that we are patient. As Shaykh Fawzan, Hafizullah Ta'ala, he says, وَقَالَ Imam وَإِذُ بُطُولِيَ الصَّبْرِ That when he is tested by Allah Ta'ala, then he is patient. He is patient. Naam. The Shaykh, he says, يَبْتَلِي الْعَبْدِ وَيَبْتَلِيهِمْ بِمُصَائِبِ Allah Azza wa Jal يَبْتَلِي الْعِبَادِ وَيَبْتَلِيهِمْ بِالْمُصَائِبِ that Allah Azza wa Jal, He tests the slaves and He puts them through trials uh, by way of calamities. He puts them through trials by way of calamity. As Allah Ta'ala says, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَالنَّقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَالْبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ أَلَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةً قالوا أو إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إن لله وإن إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون. Allah Taala He says what what means and this gives us some indication of يعني some characteristics of those who are in fact patient. Allah Taala He says what means and verily we shall test them with something from fear and from hunger and from the loss of life. Uh, from the loss of money and, and life and fruits. So give glad tidings to the patient. Those patient ones, either أصابت مصيبة, those ones who that when a calamity touched them, what do they say? Do they curse and yell out and, and speak negatively and so on and so forth? No. But rather, Allah Ta'ala says about them, قَالُوا They say, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ That verily we belong to Allah. وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ And verily we are returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam, this is a statement of those who are patient. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Allah Ta'ala, He says about them, Ula'ika alayhim salawatun min rabbihim wa rahmah. That those who do this, those who say this, those who are patient when a calamity strikes them, Allah Ta'ala, He says, then these are the ones who they will have from their, yani, uh, they will have upon them from their Lord, salawat. Right? They will have yani, salawat for them. Why? Because they are patient. When a calamity came, they were patient. So for them is salawat. Naam. And this is something that is yani, uh, tremendous. So you find that they will have the salutations from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of their endurance of a calamity. Right? And these are the ones who also they will have rahmah. They will have blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. So you find that a person goes through a calamity, he goes through a travesty, and so on and so forth. But he exhibits the patience that is necessary upon him. And then you'll find because he exhibits that patience, that calamity turns into a very good opportunity for him. Right? It turns into a very excellent and out outstanding opportunity for him. So he will have the salutations from his Lord, and he will have for him mercy. وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ And these are they who are guided. These are the ones who are guided. Naam. And this is something that is tremendous. This is something well, that is tremendous. So you find that an individual, Naam, he went through a calamity, but at the end of it, it ended up what, being better for him. Because it resulted, due to yeah, him being patient, uh, that he was from those whom Allah Ta'ala sent salutations upon them. Allah Ta'ala has mercy upon them. And they are those who are guided. They are those who are guided. So for him, his calamity ended up being for him that which was better for him. Now, that which was better for him. The Shaykh, he goes on and he says, Allah Ta'ala, Shaykh Fawzan, he goes on and he says, 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tests His servants, He tests His slaves with calamities. And He tests them with things that are detested, things that they don't like. Naam. And that He tests them with the uh, enemies from the hypocrites and from the uh, from the kuffar that he tests the muslims by way of the kuffar by the enemies from the kuffar and by way of the enemies from the hypocrites the munafiqun fa yahtajuna ila sabr wa adam al-yats wa adam al-qunut min rahmatillah so therefore they need patience it is necessary they really really need to be patient and to not give up hope nor despair from the mercy of Allah Jalla wa'ala. But rather, the Shaykh says, وَيَثْبُتُونَ عَلَى دِينِهِمْ And they have to be settled, they have to be firm upon their religion. They have to be firm upon their religion. They don't, they don't waver. When the calamity comes, this is not the time to, to now want to run away from the deen. But this is the time uh, that you need the deen the most. This is not the time to waver, but this is the time to be steadfast. This is the time uh, to be steadfast. The Shaykh goes on and he says, وَيَثْبُتُونَ عَلَى دِينِهِمْ وَلَا يَتَزَحْزَحُونَ مَعَ الْفِتِنِ That they have to be firm upon their religion and they are not to waver with the fitna. They are not to waver because of the fitna that has come to them and that has touched them. But they are to be firm. Naam. But they are to be uh, firm. The Shaykh he goes on and he says, وَيَصْبِرُونَ عَلَى مَا يُقَاسُونَ مِنَ الْأَتْعَابِ But rather they are to be patient upon whatsoever they may undergo from difficulties. Uh, that may come along with that particular trial and tribulation. Naam. That they are to be uh, uh, patient upon. مَا يُقَاسُونَ مِنَ الْأَتْعَابِ فِي سَبِيلِهَا They are to be patient. Whatever trials and tribulations and difficulties may come about during this, uh, this calamity and so on and so forth, they have to be patient. Naam. They have to be patient. As Allah Ta'ala, he, he promised us in, the, in, in, in this ayah. And verily, most definitely, no doubt, we're going to test you. We're going to give you tests. Naam. And this ayah can be found in uh, Surah Al-Baqarah. And it's verse 155. Verse 155. Naam. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, He told us what we ought to do when the patients come and what we ought to say. We don't waver, we don't give up, but rather we recognize that this is test is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah ta'ala says that they are the ones who say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. That verily we belong to Allah. We know this test is from Allah. Allah tests his slaves with that which he chooses to test his slave by. So we understand that. And we understand that we are returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the time to be steadfast upon our deen. Because we're going to return to Allah Ta'ala and Allah Ta'ala is going to ask us uh, what, we, what, what we did. We're going to be held accountable for our actions. Naam. So we understand this and it's the time to be steadfast upon the deen. Uh, and this can be found in Surah uh, Baqarah verse 156. And then in the uh, 157, Allah Ta'ala, He mentions the reward for those who are patient and they patiently endure. And this is what we have to do. Those who will have the salawat from Allah Ta'ala upon them, those who will have the rahmah of Allah, those who will be guided, then these are the ones who are patient. These are the ones who are patient and they endure throughout the course of the tribulation. Naam, they are patient and they endure throughout the course of the tribulation. The Shaykh, he says, بِخِلَافِ الَّذِينَ إِذَا بُتُولِيَا جَزِعَ وَتَسَخَّطَ وَقَنِطَهْ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ وَقَنِطَهْ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ عَزُّ وَجَلْ He said, and this is contrary to those who, when they are tested, they become unhappy. They overly worry. 
They become upset, they become angry, and they despair from the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. فَهَذَا يُزَادُ إِبْتِلَاءٌ إِلَى إِبْتِلَاءٍ وَمُصَائِبٌ إِلَى مُصَائِبٍ The Shaykh, he says, but this in reality, it does nothing but increases their calamity, increases calamity upon their calamity. It increases travity upon their travity. It increases a disaster upon a disaster. Calamity upon calamity. Travesty upon travesty. Hardship upon hardship. Pain upon pain. That's what they get when they're unhappy. When they become angry and they despair from the mercy of Allah. It ends up what increases. It increases their misfortune. It increases their disaster. It increases their crisis. With Dalil. And what is the proof of that? The proof of that is that what has been collected by Imam At-Tirmidhi or Imam Ibn Umajah and others from the hadith of Anas bin Malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu an Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam annahu qal that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said inna allaha idha ahabba qawman that when Allah loves the people, He tests them. When Allah Ta'ala, He loves the people, He tests them. And in the beginning of that hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He said, jaza ma bala. That the greater the calamity, the greater the reward. The greater the calamity, the greater the reward for the one who was what? Who was patient. And then the Prophet Sallallahu said, Inna Allah idha ahabba qawman fatalahum That if Allah loves the people, He tests them. Imam Ibn Qayyim, rahimullah ta'ala, He mentions, and the ulama, they mention, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometimes He may test an abd, He may test a slave, because Allah ta'ala, He wants for that slave a particular level inside of the Jannah, of which their actions have not earned. That Allah Ta'ala want to place that particular slave inside of an area in Jannah that his actions huh, don't warrant. So because of the fairness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala, He puts that servant through tests, trials, and tribulations so that their sins can be removed and they can be elevated because of their patience and they patiently endured. So therefore, by way of the calamity, they will reach Allah Ta'ala's reward that He desires for them. Whether that punish, uh, excuse me, whether that uh, test or that calamity be sickness, whether it be uh, extreme poverty, whether it be something from hunger, Right, whether it be uh, because he loses uh, yeah, any loved ones and people pass away, or whatever the difficulty may be from the difficulties, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he may afflict the person with difficulties so as to remove from them sin and to raise their rank and to put them in a place in Jannah of which their actions did not warrant. So for the abd, who is a mu'min, for the mu'min, his affair is all good. Like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said in that hadith That has been collected in Muslim Where the Prophet Sallallahu He said Ajiban li amrin mu'min Inna amrahu kullahu khayrun Wa laysa thaka Wa laysa thaka illa Wa laysa thaka li ahadin illa lil mu'min As the Prophet Sallallahu He said Amazing is the affair of the believer And that verily his affair is all good. For the believer, his affair is all good. And that is for no one except for the believer. In Asabatu Sarra Shakar Fakana Khairun Lah. If he is tested with a good time, he is patient, and that is better for him. Wa in Asabatu Dara Sabar Fakana Khairun Lah. And if he is tested with a a difficult time and a calamity then he is patient and that is better for him so whether it's a good time 
or whether it's a calamity for the believer, it's all good. You don't lose. You don't lose. As long as what? As long as when a good time comes, you are thankful to Allah Ta'ala. And as long as when the bad time comes, you are patient, then you will never lose. You're being, you're being thankful and having gratitude to Allah Ta'ala. And your being patient is better for you. It's better for you. Now, the Prophet Sallallahu goes on to say in his hadith, and I want you to pay close attention. The Prophet Sallallahu goes on and he says, فَمَنْ رَضْيَ فَلَهُ الرِّضَى Whoever is happy, then for him, will be happiness or yani, whoever is pleased and for him will be pleasure meaning that Allah will be pleased with him whoever is pleased when a calamity comes and Allah will be pleased with him نعم وَمَنْ سَخِطَ فَعَلَيْهِ سَخْطُ or فَمَنْ سَخِطَ فَعَلَيْهِ سُخْطُ and whoever is angry he becomes angry and upset by what has befalled him or befell him then for him will be anger meaning Allah will be angry with him so this hadith, the hadith of Anas bin Malik is tremendous. I'm going to say it again in English because I want everyone to, to write it down. The hadith it begins again on the authority of Anas bin Malik that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, the greater the travesty, the greater the reward. And that verily, if Allah loves the people, he tests them. So whoever is pleased, then for him will be the pleasure of Allah. And whoever is angry, then for him will be the anger of Allah. So we understand now and we see clearly the dalil that the one who was angry, he's upset, he's unhappy, he has despair in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this reaction of his or this reaction of hers in wake of a tragedy, then it does nothing but add calamity to their calamity, to add misfortune to their misfortune, to add travesty to their travesty and disaster upon their disaster. No. The Shaykh, Allah Ta'ala, he goes on and he says, وَأَعْظَمُ nas بَلَائِن Because a person, he may say, if Allah loves the people, he tests them. And they may want an illustration or an example of this. Well, who has Allah loved that he has tested? The Shaykh, he says, وَأَعْظَمُ nas بَلَائِن الْأَنْبِيَاء He says that the people who receive the greatest tests then they are the prophets. Those who receive the greatest tests, then they are the prophets. As it comes in a hadith that has been collected by a tirmidhi That those who receive the greatest tests, those who have the yani, uh, hardest lives, for lack of a better term, then they are the prophets. And we know that the, the Anbiya, the Prophets, alayhum salatu wassalam, the knees are the most beloved human beings to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah ta'ala, He tests them. So anyone who's going through anything from being falsely accused or being yani, uh, oppressed or even falsely imprisoned, right? And, and unjustly imprisoned, wouldn't well, think back to Yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam. And he was a Prophet. From the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look back to his trial and, and what he went through. And then now compare it to what you have gone through. And you will see that what? The two don't equate. Two don't equate. His own brothers, his own siblings threw him down a well. He was picked up by a caravan and sold off. And then he was falsely imprisoned for many, many years. So no matter what you're going through, look back to the Anbiya and the Rusul. Look back to the Anbiya and the Rusul. Those who may be sick, look back to, to Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam. Look to what he went through. Look to the sickness that he had. Yes, your stomach may hurt. Yes, your back may hurt. Yes, your knee may hurt. Yes, this or that may ail you. But look back to the sickness that Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam he had. 
to the point where people ostracize him. They left him. Those who are beloved to him turn their backs on him because of his sickness. So now you think now, you look back, as sick as you may be, but your family is still around you when you're in your hospital bed. Your family is still around you when you're, when, you're, when, you're, when you're laying up in the bed in the house. So now think back and you compare. Compare what you're going through to that which Ayyub Alayhi went through and you will see it don't compare. Those who had the the hardest of the tests, then they were the, the Anbiya. Which shows you that when Allah Ta'ala, when He loves the people, He tests them. He tests them. Why? 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 Because Because the greatest reward or the greater the calamity, the greater the reward. The greater the calamity, the greater the reward. The Prophet said, That the, those who have the greatest tests from the people, then they are the prophets. And then those who are next or yani, closer to them, and those who are closer to them. So the more righteous a person becomes, the, yani, uh, uh, the more a person raises in taqwa and so on and so forth, then you find that the individual he will be tested more and more and more. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tests the individual. As the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he told us, "You betel al abdu ala hasbi dini," that he tests a person in accordance to his religion. Allah subhanahu wa taala he doesn't test us to destroy us. Allah taala he tests us to reward us. He tests us to raise us. He doesn't test us to destroy us. So so therefore, every test that may come to an individual, Allah taala gives you that test because you can handle it. Because you can handle it. Now, and this is why you find everyone is tested different because maybe that which Allah tests you with, Allah doesn't test me with because I can't handle it. Maybe you can handle that, but I can't handle it. So Allah does not test me with that, but He tests me with something else because I can handle that. And maybe that which I'm tested with, Allah does not test you with because you can't handle that. Allah Ta'ala tests everyone according to the level of His religion or her religion. Now, so it's important that we know, we understand. Allah will test you according to the level of your religion. And the greater the test, the greater the reward. Allah Ta'ala, He tested the messengers. The messengers were tested. The messengers, they were tested. And those who were sincere and truthful, they were tested. And the martyrs, they were tested. And the believing slaves of Allah, they were tested. Naam. So we have to look back, read back to the stories of the prophets and the messengers. والسلام, read back to the stories of the righteous people and the ulama. My Shaykh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. Look to his tests. Look to what he was put through inside of his lifetime. So on and so forth. And from that you will be able to understand a number of things. One is that you are not alone when you're going through a test. Just like you are being tested, everyone else is being tested uh, with tests in which they can handle uh, according to their religion. So you know that you're not alone. You're not an isolated situation. Everyone is being tested. Naam? Everyone is being tested with something. And also look back, when you look back to the stories of the Anbiya and the Rusul and these great scholars, you will find that worse has happened to better than you. You understand? That people who are better than you went through that which was worse than what you're going through. So it helps you to put your test into perspective that those who were better went through worse. You understand what I'm saying? Those who are better went through worse. And that will help you to be able to put your test into perspective and it will help you to deal with your test, help you to deal with your test. But when you look through back to their lives and their stories and the like, then you'll be able to yeah, get some inspiration from what they have went through and some motivation to help you get through what you're going through. ta'ala. So read back. Yeah. To the lives uh, of the the Anbiya, the Rusul, and the righteous people, uh, and and see what they have went through and how they were patient. The Shaykh says, "Well, I can them sabru, but they were patient. They were patient. Wa amma al munafiqin, wa amma al munafiq, but the hypocrite, hypocrite is not patient. But the Qur'an Allah Taala anhu, 
the pro, uh, Allah Ta'ala said about them, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى الْحَرْفِ And they're from human beings who worship Allah upon a harf, yani tarf. They worship Allah like they're on the edge. They're on the edge, right? Can sway either way. You understand? Allah Ta'ala, He says, فَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ خَيْرٌ إِطْمَأَنَّ بِهِ If he is tested with good, he's happy with that. He's tranquil. He's pleased with that. وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ فِتْنَةٌ إِنْ قَلَبَ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ But if a fitna comes to him, he turns his face away. He turned back. That's how the hypocrite is. When times are good, he wants to be with the believers. Right? When times are good, he with the believers. When the calamity come, he out. He don't want to do with Islam now. You understand? This is the hypocrite. The way the hypocrite. This is the way the hypocrite. When things are going good, sister want to cover. MashaAllah, she got niqab. She want to make salah, so on and so forth. She get tested, she want to take everything off. First thing she reaching for is her khimar. Get this out of here. Get this niqab off of me. No more jilbab. Ya salam. It's not the way of the believer. Not the way of the believer. Calamity come now here and won't pray. Oh, I'm depressed. I'm clinically depressed. So I'm going to sit here in a chair. That chair ain't going to help you out your depression. But that's salah. Hey, wa naam. Allah Ta'ala says, وَاسْتَعِينُ بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ And seek... Yani aid and the what patience and the prayer for what for the one who's going through hard times you should be praying more, not sitting in your chair claiming that you're so depressed you can't move. Yes, salam. Al kul and this is the way of the hypocrite. Allah Taala He says about them khasida dunya wal akhirah. The hypocrite he loses out on the dunya and the hereafter. He loses out. He's a loser. You see, because the test came to him. He don't want to be patient. So he loses out. He's a loser. He loses out in this world and in the hereafter. Allah Ta'ala says, and that is the clear evident loss. Is there any loss greater than that? A person loses the dunya and the akhirah? He's a loser. Naam. Sheikh, he says, for dunya, and I want you to understand this point. I want you to understand this point very well. No matter what you're going through, I want you to understand this point right now. For dunya laysat daima naiman wa tarafan wa maladhatan wa sururan wa nasran. Laysat daiman hakada. The Shaykh says that the dunya is not all the time good times and luxury and delight and happiness and victory. He said, the dunya is not like that. Naam, the dunya is not like that. Allah yudawiluha bain al-ibad. Allah, He he gives this yani, uh, transitionally to the slaves. Meaning, let me explain what I mean by that. Sometimes, this one will be the victor. And that one will be the loser. And then it'll swap. Next time, the one who lost before, now he win. And the one who won before, now he lose. Huh? Sometimes these ones are healthy. The other ones are sick. Then that transfers. Now the ones who was healthy, now they sick. The ones who were sick, now they healthy. Things don't stay the same. Things keep moving. This one was poor, now he's rich. This one was rich, now he's poor. This one was in good time, now he's in bad time. Now he was in bad time, now he's in good time. So on and so forth. Now, so these things of luxury and the light and, and happiness and so on and so forth, Allah Ta'ala, He interchangeably gives these to the slaves as He pleases. Now, for Sahaba of the Ummah, the Sahaba you found, they was the best of the Ummah. Right? For Mada Jara Alayhim, Min al Ibtila, Wimtihan. They were from the best of this nation. But what has reached them from the uh, tests and the trials and tribulations? What has reached the Sahaba from tests and trials and tribulations? You see? But they went through. We have not gone through the like of this. When they were boycotted. And they had to eat from the, the, the grass and the herbage that was found inside of uh, the desert. They said so much so that their defecation, it came out. And it looked like the defecation of the animals filled with straw and very fibrous and so on and so forth. Which one of you has gone through the likes of this? Which one of you has to eat from the grass? 
need to understand these things so we were able to put our situations and our difficulties into perspective it is important that to know that good times don't last and one thing that helps us is to realize or that once we realize that good times don't last then we understand the opposite as well bad times don't last bad times don't last just like good times don't last bad times don't last you understand because this dunya is not going to last so we can't become attached with the dunya and things that is nature but we have to be patient we have to be patient no matter what we go through because as Muslims we understand that what that no matter what I go through in this world this is not the end this is not the end so even if from right now it is not decreed that I will drink again in this dunya or that I will breathe again in this dunya or that my heart will beat again in this dunya or or to the end of it as believers we know that there is a hereafter wal aqiba lil muttaqin and that the end of the affair is for those who fear Allah so if you don't eat no more in this dunya but you're a believer it's all good because inshallah ta'ala you will eat again in the jannah if you don't drink any more water in this dunya la bats no problem because for the believer are the rivers and the delights and that which would be drunk inside of the jannah so it's okay in Imam Ibn Qayyim he mentions that the poet he said Ya ahli al-ladhat al-dunya la baqa'un laha inna al-ightiraran bil-dhillin za'ilin humqu Imam Ibn Qayyim he says that the poet he said O people of worldly delights O people of worldly delights verily they shall not last all those who putting everything inside of uh, all of their proverbial eggs in the worldly basket they know that this world is not going to last he said verily the one who becomes mesmerized with the fleeting shade then verily this is just pure stupidity somebody gets so mesmerized with the with the with the with the shade in this area knowing that 2 3 hours from now the shade ain't going to be there no more he says, so the one who falls in love, the one who's come memorized with the fleeting sh- uh, shade, then this is pure stupidity. So we have to be patient, yeah, Ibad. Because we are moving toward to the hereafter. Allah Ta'ala, He tells us, so that you know that you'll go through good times and you'll go through bad times. Allah Ta'ala He says, And these are the days that we interchangeably give to human beings. Some some human beings, today is a good day for them. Other human beings, today is a bad day for them. Tomorrow, the opposite. Maybe today was bad, tomorrow will be good. Uh, so on and so forth. These things are interchangeable. The Shaykh He says, he says so that the uh, the believer he has resolved and he settled upon the fact that if he is tested then he knows this is not something that is particular to him it's not just him because this already happened these tests right and difficulty and hardship it already happened to those uh, those close servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those avid servants of Allah that they were tested as well. Those who were better than us went through worse than what we're going through. So we know it's not just us. Naam. For he walked with nafsu. So he has to uh, make his 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 soul settle. Wayasbir. And he has to yani, be patient. We antadr al al faraj min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he awaits the reward. He awaits the relief from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which brings us uh, to the last thing I want to mention and that is the categories of sabr and what we have to be patient upon as the ulama they explain and they are three I want you to write them down uh, uh, they are sabr ala ta'a to be patient in performing the righteous good deeds patient upon obedience 
We have to be patient upon obedience. Every act of worship requires patience. The salah requires patience. Sawm of Ramadan, fasting of Ramadan requires patience. Making hajj requires patience. Every act of worship requires from us what? Patience. Secondly, a sabr an ma'asiyah. That we are patient in staying away from sin. This is the second. That we have to be patient in staying away from sin. Because our evils of our souls, they may be inclined to a particular sin. So we have to be patient and fight ourselves and be patient in staying away from that sin. And thirdly, patience of sabr and ala musaib that we have patience of sabr ala musaib that we have patience uh, upon the calamities and dealing with the calamity that we are patient. That we are patient. When a calamity comes, that we are patient. Naam. If Allah Ta'ala blesses us with the likes of this patience, as you see, which is a required component of everybody's life, then you will see how the good will be increased because there's not a single aspect of our life except that we have to be patient. Whether it's in obedience to Allah, we have to be patient in being obedient and steadfast upon His obedience. Whether it is staying away from sin, we have to be patient in staying away from sin. And whether it's being obedient upon the calamity, we have to be patient when the calamity strikes. But we we have to know that the greater the the calamity, the greater the reward. Verily, those whom Allah loves, He tests them. Now, there comes a hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where He said. Uh, that whoever Allah wants good for He gives him trials and tribulations He tests him He puts him through calamities Naam. But we have to know That we have to hold on And be steadfast upon our religion Because no matter what we go through In this dunya This dunya is about to be over And the end of the affair Will be for those Who truly fear Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala فنكتفي بهذا القدر وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إلى اللقاء استودعكم الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته